Hello friends, welcome to Smart Catalyst. Today we'll be seeing the current affairs of 12 January 2019. The articles we'll be seeing for prelims are these seven. First one is about vote on account option for the central government. Second article is about private capital expenditure which could boost growth in the year 2019. Third article is about multi-purpose dam in the state of Himachal Pradesh. Fourth article is about Prasad scheme. Fifth one is about Chandrayaan 2. Sixth article talks about the recently released index of industrial production data. And the final article is about the Gaganyaan project of ISRO. The first article we'll be seeing is views divided on vote on account option for the central government. So here we have to know what is vote on account option. So in our constitution, article 226 says that any amount can be withdrawn from the consolidated fund of India only via the approval of parliament. Whereas in article 114 clause 3, it is specifically mentioned that such a withdrawal of funds from consolidated fund of India can be made only with the help of an appropriation bill. So every year in the month of February, the annual budget is presented by the government and the budget deals with both receipts as well as expenditure part of the government for the coming year. However, if the year is an election year, normal budget is not presented and the interim budget is presented. So such an interim budget consists of a special clause called as vote on account. So this is because normally on an election year, the current government may continue or a new government may come in place. So in such a situation, a grant is provided in advance via vote and account. By vote and account, the government obtains vote of the parliament for a sum sufficient to incur its expenditure for various items in the part of a year. So currently the vote and account will deal with expenditure for four months, that is from February to June. So unlike the union annual budget, this vote on accounts does not deal with the receipts part, it deals only with the expenditure part. And there is no exclusive provision in the constitution which talks about the vote on account, but it's usually a convention by which the vote on account is passed in Lok Sabha and it is usually passed without any discussion. As I said before, vote on account is presented via interim budget and the interim budget usually doesn't make any drastic changes. So providing corporate or income tax relief via a uh, needs requirement of amending finance act and income tax act so which is conventionally not done in an interim budget the next article we'll be seeing is private capital expenditure could boost growth in the year 2019 this article was taken from the paper indian express so as we all know india is a consumption driven economy such a consumption driven economy can survive only with the help of adequate production facilities And for initiating and running production facilities, we require investment. So without investment, the growth of a country is definitely hindered. So such an investment is uh, offered in the terms of loan. So if loan growth is slowed down, it will definitely affect the private consumption. So if the private consumption is affected, it will definitely have impact on capital utilization as well as capital expenditure for industries. So these industries mainly constitute MSME sector. However, recently, the capital expenditure growth has been reinitiated in the sectors of steel, refineries, as well as airport. And this restarted capital infusion in these sectors will definitely have its spillover effects on other industries as well. And it will as well create more employment opportunities. Other ongoing projects dealing with oil, gas Bharat stage 6 emission related projects as well as uh, large scale projects such as Bharat Mala and railway ele electrification will definitely have impact and it will add the cap capital expenditure growth in our country. The next article we'll be seeing is six states signed pact for dam in Himachal Pradesh. This is a very important news article for the prelims exam. So the project is called as Zenuka G multi-purpose project. This multi-purpose project will cover areas of for drinking water irrigation and also will supply water for the industries. So this project is built over the upper channels of river Yamuna and two of its important tributaries namely Tones and Giri. It will be built on a hilly region in the states of Uttar Khand and Himachal Pradesh. Apart from these two states, other states which will be involved in the projects include all the states wherein river Yamuna flows including Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan as well as national capital territory of Delhi. 
Three important projects of this Renukaji multi-purpose project are Lakwal project of on river Yamuna in the state of Uttarakhand, Kishao project of river Tones in the state of Uttarakhand, and Renukaji project on river Giri in the state of Himachal Pradesh. However, such a big multi-purpose project is possible only if it receives environmental clearance from Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and this project is yet to receive the forest clearance from the ministry. The next article we'll be seeing is New Projects Under Prasad Scheme. So here we have to know about the Prasad Scheme for prelims exam. So this Prasad Scheme stands for Pilgrimage Rejuvenation and Spirituality Argumentation Drive. So in our country, the concept of tourism goes hand in hand with pilgrimage. So Ministry of Tourism aims to utilize this convergence we are a scheme called as Prasad Scheme. So, Ministry of Tourism plans to utilize this convergence and it develops 12 important cities across all religion for promotion of tourism. So, the Ministry of Tourism will also put in efforts to develop the basic amenities like sanitation and cleanliness of these cities to increase the to increase the tourism potential of the cities. So, we have to know the 12 cities in Prasad Scheme. They are Amravati in the state of Andhra Pradesh, Gaya in Bihar. Dwaraka in Gujarat, Amritsar in Punjab, Ajmer in Rajasthan, Kanchipuram and Velangani in Tamil Nadu, Puri in Odisha, Varnasi and Mathura in the state of Uttar Pradesh, Kedarnath in Uttarakhand, and Kamakya in the state of Assam. The next article we'll be seeing is ISRO set to launch Chandrayaan 2 by March April this year. So ISRO will be launching Chandrayaan 2 this year. So it has earlier missed two windows in the year 2017 and 2018 as well. So the second mission of ISRO to moon is totally indigenous and it comprises of an orbiter, a lander as well as a rover. This satellite will be launched by using GSLV Mark 3 satellite launch vehicle and it weighs about 3200 kgs. First the mission will be sent to geo transfer orbit from which it will reach the orbit of moon. So this mission will land on south pole of moon from where the lander will be detached from the rover and will make and will conduct series of experiments on the soils of moon. So this mission will carry a six-wheeled rover which will move around the landing site in a semi-autonomous mode as desired by the ground commands of ISRO and it would orbit around the moon and perform various remote sensing operations in the surface of moon. The operations include lunar topography, study of minerals in the moon, elemental abundance, lunar exosphere, Signatures of compounds such as hydroxyl and water ice on the moon. The next article we'll be seeing is ISRO cranks up Gaganyaan project. This article was taken from Hindu. So ISRO is all set to send its first manned mission to moon In order to accomplish this manned human mission, a new human space flight center has been set up in Bengaluru and it will be the Gaganyaan hub. So this maiden human space mission of ISRO will be launched by using GSLV Mark III. Though India's ISRO has made significant progress in the domain of space technology, it has never sent a manned mission to space. By sending its maiden human space mission, India will enter into the elite club of countries which have already sent their manned mission to space. The last article we'll be seeing is factories failed to deliver the goods in November. So this article talks about index of industrial production data. The index of industrial production, it tells about the short term growth of the industries in our country. This data of IIP is released by CSO under Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation and uh, the base year for this data is 2011-12. So the data for the month of November, it showed 17 month low of 0.7 percentage amid slump in manufacturing. Uh, the manufacturing sectors it shrank by 0.4 percent, electricity by 5.1 percent and mining by 2.4 percent. So here you have to know about the composition of IIP. So IIP is broadly divided into three sectors namely manufacturing, mining and electricity. Manufacturing it constitutes about 79.3 percent of the total weightage, mining 10.2 percent and electricity 10.5 percent. This release the data of CSO it shows shows that shows the slowdown in second half of financial year 2018 as well as 2018 and 2019. It is to be noted that so far the growth has been majorly driven by the government spending. So more government spending will definitely increase the physical deficit which can make the health financial health of the economy unsustainable.